All right, grab your Pi 4 and the latest Dragon OS Pi 64 to follow along in this video. This is um, going to be about setting it up for headless use and still being able to use real VNC. And then also just a quick look at how to set up SDR++ to receive MRSAT C messages. And with that, I'll have an RTL SDR. And I have one of the, uh, the older patch antennas just kind of sitting out aimed in the general direction. Uh, I normally use it for uh, Iridium, but this should be fine for MRSAT C. I was messing with it earlier. Uh, first though, you're looking at a blank screen here with a terminal. Just to show you, I've booted the Pi 4 up with no HDMI plugged in, and we're going to take a look real quick how to set this up so that we can still uh, get in with real BNC and not be looking at a black screen on uh, the attempted log in like you see right now. So we're just going to SSH in with the default user of Ubuntu. Password is Dragon. Now you could do this uh, without SSH and just having an HDMI cable plugged in, make these changes and then reboot, but I'm just showing if you needed to, you could do it this way. We'll use uh, VI or Nano uh, Editor, whatever you're used to. And we're going to go into the boot firmware. It's now in the boot firmware config.txt, unlike in the older Dragon OS Pi 64 image where it was some user config file. And that's all um, mentioned in the Getting Started Guide on the desktop. We're going to come down and we'll uncomment where I made uh, mention of using for headless use. Now this is uh, for no HDMI and 1080p resolution, but you can look up those groups and modes for different uh, resolution settings. The other thing I found uh, that we need to do is comment out the overlay, which I don't know you know, what that'll do for the, the graphics performance when that is commented, but if you're running headless, I don't, you're probably not that concerned about that. So I'll control O hit enter save control exit and I'll reboot and then we'll be back here in a second alright so it has rebooted it's coming back uh, up and the real VNC uh, viewer connection is still going and now we can see we get the desktop so there may be a little bit of a lag uh, through the network here but we should be able to get in now and see the desktop. All right, now we see the familiar um, setup that you've uh, become used to. Most everything is back in place, just basically all new. What we'll do is we'll start up SDR++ uh, for this next part of the video here. Now I have already uh, messed with this earlier, like I was saying, I'm, I've got the uh, center frequency tuned there. But what I'll show is when you first get set up here, you need to come down to the module uh, manager and we'll look for, in the drop down box, we'll look for the MRSAT C demodulator, put it in, you can give it whatever name you want to name it we'll add it and then we'll see if we come down a little further we have a new section of the menu here and it's checked by default now note that with this checked you do not uh, need the radio up at the top you don't have to mess with USB and and setting that up this takes care of everything so you can actually turn the radio off and then the only uh, VFO will be the MRSAT DMOD uh, let me think what else other than that just make sure your RTL SDR is selected you probably could change the sample rate uh, to, to something less uh, you'll want to turn on the bias T in this case uh, I'm using the RTL SDR bias T to power the antenna. If you had something you know, external, leave that off. But we'll go ahead and start this up. We see there's nothing there right now, but if we kick on the bias T, and you may need to mess with 
uh, your gain and lower arrays as needed. Uh, looking at the waterfall there, we'll zoom in. And I may need to tune this a little bit here. If we come down and we look at our uh, signal constellation here, we can see well, what we really want is two two round circles there. So I'll move this over a little bit. And we'll see what's it's looking better. Okay, we've got a sink, and what we're looking for is uh, some frames decoded results. Okay, while we continue to wait for some decoded frames, I probably should have just recorded this at a better time, uh, where some message traffic is going on what we'll show is while we've got this pulled up we can go under other and we look at the QST D C D E C we'll just do a dot forward slash Q uh, and start that application minimize and if we start the portion down here which is going to send that audio over the network and we can uh, stop and uh, listen on, on this end. Once we get those decoded frames it'll come over into the QT GUI there where we can see those messages and then save them as needed. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, I actually took that time to read up a little bit here. I found a really good article from SDR Play. I'll have to remember to link to this. Uh, just reading a little more about STD, uh, STDC messages and uh, note that you know some of this could be some private information so I won't really break down the messages in this video. You need to see if um, that's an issue in your country. Uh, this is just for demonstration purposes. Uh, so I'm looking, I moved the center freak over, looks like I'm looking at MRSAT3 F5 for the region. I guess I could do MRSAT4 as well. At any rate, you can see I'm getting the uh, frames now and decoding. And you have your QT parser listening. should be able to see that we're getting packets in which we are now and if I set here uh, long enough we should get a message that pops up here on the packet side though you can break down and get uh, some more uh, information I'll just pick a signaling channel here so you you can see that that does break down and, and that there is more uh, information and each you know whether it's an announcement bulletin board or message you can uh, break that down you can save those packets to JSON and so I'll I'll hang out a little more here and see if we get uh, an actual message through but I, I know that this works Alright, perfect. So we can see we've got, uh, I got three messages, boom, that came through real quick. 
and that should be that should be about it. It's pretty simple to get set up with SDR++. The only thing you need is the right equipment, um, get a general understanding of where you need to be uh, pointing your antenna at. You can see the signal in SDR++, so you can work on um, work on that, whether it's the gain or or the the center freak. Get your uh, decoder or demodulator added and then you've got your QT viewer over here. Now say you don't want the QT viewer, say you want just a headless uh, version of, of this if you're running it. I mean, you, you could in fact run SDR++ server on the Pi uh, for headless operation and then I think in theory if you had the uh, on Dragon OS Focal, which I need to get added, the plug-in there, you should be able, I think, to receive and then do what I'm doing here remotely. But let's stop this listening of this uh, QT version of this. And if we come down to other and go STD, C, DEC, we look, there is another tool here. And in this case, we'd want to run just the parser. I've shown this in a previous video. Uh, remind myself, we'll do the da uh, dash H for help. We'll do the in UDP. I'll leave it at the default, which is 15004, which we know is the case because that's what we set in SDR++. You can pipe that out or send that out uh, for um, JSON, I guess serving it up in JSON. And then I'll just add print all. Oh. print all packets so we can just see how this would work and there we go right away uh, we're getting a packet I'll stop it here in case there's any message with private information but you can see how that runs so a couple different ways you can run it and uh, all right so hope that helps uh, both get you uh, set up for headless operation and then through the real VNC to still get to the Pi and then yeah, set up with SDR++ and the MRSAT C parser. All right, thanks.